My ass is fat. Yeah, I know. Hey, y'all. We are going to be real intimate today. I'll be asking them to help me with some stuff. Don't judge me. The pandemic didn't get the head help the big game so way. I lost five pounds recently. I'm proud of that. It, lost, it ain't go nowhere. I don't know where it disappeared to, but it's gone. So, we're gonna start. Um, today, I will be pretty much talking to y'all about niggas, right? Because we all deal with them to some capacity. And then be ungrateful as hell. And then being ungrateful as hell, right? So see, I have been openly a little sissy since, since I can remember. And my experience with men has been interesting, right? Whether it's personal, sexual, or just like the niggas in my family, it's always been really interesting. So, before today is over, you would meet Dion. Dion is my alter ego. Dion is AKA that bitch. Um, Dion is who owns all the stuff you see. Dion is like, when we think about Beyonce and her Sasha Fierce era, my hair just got stuck. We think of, you know, that, that alter ego that really amplifies your sensuality or sexuality, right? But with Dion, it allows me, Dion allows me to have these conversations about what it means to just be in this body. We want this body, right? So first things first, when I think of Dion, I gotta shave. Uh, I'm gonna sh I think I should shave my face before I shave my chest. I am, y'all just gonna see some titties. <laughs> it's, it's hot outside, so I'm a bit sticky. Hopefully this stuff works. <sighs> so in the past, I would do this, and I would do it with music being played, right? But that's because in the past, I was doing this and it was nothing but white people. And I felt uncomfortable telling them stories about my experience being black and gay. I ain't trying to perform for them. So, today, I ain't gonna have no music for y'all because we're gonna have a conversation about love and all that other all that other shit while I get dressed. This is a lot of what happens. You know, when we was in college in your dorm with your homegirl smoking your blunt, probably hot box in the bathroom with wolf food smoking in the dorms. Um, <laughs> during those times when you're getting ready to go out, so for those of us who went to school here in Detroit, who went out who went out clubbing, congratulations you you survived, because bitch almost didn't. But when, before we would go out to the club like Club Blue, there used to be this club called H2. It's not like a community garden because that bitch got toned out. Um, but me and my friends used to go to this bar. We used to talk. Before we go to the bar, we would always talk about love. But specifically, how these niggas on campus would shit. Or in my case, just niggas in general because no one knew who I was sleeping with on campus when I was in school. The guy is I was sleeping with pretty much a lot of people. I was a hoe. Probably. But they know that. So, yeah. We're gonna start off thinking, we we'll start off, right? Talking about my first, oh, okay, first off. So we're all on social media. And I recently realized that people are always talking about their queer awakening. These cis hetero niggas, baby, they're lost cause. Because all of you talk about how they fell in love with Misty from Pokemon, and that is disgusting. But for me, right, my queer awakening, I think I was like 11, right? And I was at my auntie's house. And yeah, I'll just tell you the story. So my auntie's in the kitchen cooking pork and beans again, y'all. That shit's so nasty. <laughs> I don't see why the fuck people eat that. But when you pour, you eat what you eat. I never had poor taste, so I never ate it. <laughs> um, so I was just in the kitchen cooking these nasty ass pork and beans again. Y'all, I don't eat that shit. I can't. My cousins are outside being 
wild as fuck. Throwing rocks at cars driving by. Me, hating the heat. We don't have one AC unit in my auntie's entire house. So, me being the little prissy little gay kid that I was, I parked my fat ass right in front of it. Because, it's, for one, it's hot, like it is today. And, my clothes are soaking wet. They ain't the way I want to be, you know? But, my clothes are soaking wet. So, me and my cousin Tanisha are sitting in the, the dining room. Because for some reason, my family feels the need to always turn the dining room into the front room and leave the living room fucking empty. Ghetto. I love it. So, we're in the kitchen, we're in the dining room, watching TV. And 106 in Park comes on. Tanisha turns it up and asks me to help her comb out her hair. Because she was, I think she was like, taking out, no, she was taking out this nasty synthetic weave. So, I'm like, sure girl, no problem. Um, I'm combing out her hair, and BBT premieres this new music video by D'Angelo. Um, but at the time, I didn't know who the hell it was. So, the video comes on, and there's this half-naked man on the screen, oh Jesus. And he starts to sing. Girl, it's all you, have it your way. Whatever you want, you can decide That if you have me, I can provide Everything your heart desires, no Child, I was 11, right? Gay as hell. Clearly it was gay as hell. I'm just watching and calling up his hair, praying to God that this camera meets where his V-Club connected. I really want to see his dick. And this is when I knew I was gay. Because like one 11 year old is craving to see D'Angelo's penis. Um, I don't answer that because I feel like some of y'all may have been an 11 year old cra craving to see his penis right along with me. <laughs> um, but, you know, that was my core awakening. And that was when I started to realize that I was gay. Very gay. Um, this was before, I, well I said my gay awakening because I didn't know I was gay. I didn't know I was queer and I didn't know what queer was. I knew I liked men. I knew I was supposed to like men, but I liked men. I was conditioned not to like men, but I liked them anyways. Oh, I forgot to cut that. So, I, you know, started crushing on boys in school and shit. I would never tell anyone when I was looking at a boy. I have a journal. When I was in high school, y'all, there was this boy named Red. Well, that's what we called him. And I'll never forget, we were in Marshall, we were in band class, and he touched my leg. Mm -mm -mm. You would think I would have had sex the way my dick got hard. <laughs> but, you know, we did. Because it was in some class and he was quote unquote straight or whatever. But, we, he touched my leg and I was like, oh, boys are touching me. Right? So then I started getting to a point where I wanted the boy, I wanted a boyfriend. So I started using social media, certain websites I shouldn't have been on, i.e. Black Gay Chat. Rest in peace. <laughs> Actually, I think it's still up. Ghetto. Anyways. <laughs> um, so, I met this boy. His name is Aaron. I cannot remember his fucking first name, so don't ask me. I mean, his last name, so don't ask me. I wish I could, though. So I can call him a cousin the fuck out. So, <sighs> we broke up, right? And this is a story. So I sit in the middle of my queen size bed, crying over someone's whose last name I cannot fucking remember. He told me he loved me, y'all. Ooh, Jesus, he told me he loved me. I believed him. He introduced me to his sisters. We walked around East Warren together like, like love struck puppies. I had a broken leg at the time and a cast, the same color of my high school, blue and white. After about three weeks, it did not give him what he wanted, being some ass. He broke up with me. He told me for some nigga who would love him more, love him better. In other words, someone who would suck his dick, because I wasn't going to do it. I was trying to be good, you know? 
did you know that? My love was deeper, tighter, sweeter, higher, flyer. Didn't he know this? Why didn't he notice? I'm missing something. So, she broke up with me. And I sat in the middle of my queen size bed, crying over someone whose last name I could not fucking remember. Where is that concealer? Anyways, we use this instead. Someone who's asking my cannot for the last of me, remember? Right? My nephew, Darren, at the time was six. For those of you who know me, y'all know I'm like really close. I talk about my family a lot. So Darren, my nephew who's six at the time, comes into my bedroom, watches his uncle standing in the middle of the bed, ripping posters off the wall, having a nasty ass, sad, depressed, way to wake up, fuck you, mama. Sorry, I think I'm actually probably playing, playing some like, I'm going now, type of bullshit. <laughs> um, and Darren walks in the room, and Uncle Darrell, what's wrong? And gives me the biggest hug, right? And tells me he loves me. And all I can think of is how much I want right now. All I can think of is how much I wish that the nigga whose last name I cannot fucking remember would love me the same way. But, you know, he couldn't. Chuck it up to the game, you feel me? I feel like niggas don't know how to love themselves. I didn't learn to love somebody else. That's a very RuPaul quote. That was so gay. Clearly, <laughs> season 14. I might be on season 30, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, that was not the brush out season. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, so my little heart was broken, and that's fine. It's fine, hello. It's okay to have your heart broken, especially at a young age. So now you know how to gauge the bullshit. You know how to work around it, right? Because anybody can tell. I'm so trying to fuck somebody if they break my heart right now. I wish somebody would fuck around and go missing. So, that's a bit much. So. Um, life goes on. I go to college. I meet boys. I fall in love. Or at least what I, thought, what I think is love was actually just lust. Because, again, the niggas don't love themselves. I don't fuck, they don't love me. Um, I meet this boy named Tamal. He was this fine ass chocolate boy on the baseball team. So I thought. I thought it was a baseball team. That motherfucker was lying, y'all. That nigga was not on the embrace ball team. But we met in the laundry room one night. Um, this is actually how we met. He was flirting. I'm gonna be honest, I'm oblivious to when people are actually flirting, I can never actually tell. So he's flirting, and I'm like, oh, he's flirting with me. Um, um, and one day he finds me on Instagram, or no, not Instagram, because I still had the flip files, and it wasn't Instagram. That's just how old I am. And he finds me on Facebook. And he um, sends me his number, tells me to call him. So I'm like, okay, we'll call him. He's cute. Right? Not that much. He's cute. So I give him my number. We start texting. Talking about favorite superheroes and shit. Very, very much like trying to get to know each other. It's evident that I'm very openly gay, and he is very not openly gay. Fun fact, he's married now to a woman with two children. They're slingers, but they're both bisexual. He sent my DMs recently, sent me a picture of his dick. It's still big, still don't want it. Um, but um, one night, he invited me to his dorm. Was like, he was going to buy his Chinese food, right? Me being the little gullible little gay kid that I am at 19 and 20. I'm like, OK, I'm going to come to your dorm. Go to his dorm. Yeah, he got Chinese food, but he also got a box of condoms and a big bottle of lube out. So he just assumed he about to get some ass. He thought wrong, the fuck. Um, so we watching movies because he said he said he was telling me how much he loves watching um, superhero films. And me loving to just be a pleaser. I'm like, yeah, let's watch superhero movies. Like, watch. He likes. 
fucking Iron Man. Because he's a fucking child. So we watching we watching the movie and I'm like, oh I'll 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 come up and I'll bring I'll bring some some <laughs> something to drink. I think he thought I was talking about liquor because I was 20, but no, sorry, I'm bringing you some Dr. Pepper because that's all I drink at the time. I want some Cheetos. Anybody want some Cheetos? Big ass bag of Cheetos, Jesus Christ. So we are sitting at the sitting there watching the movie. And out of nowhere, his dick just magically appears. <laughs> right next to me, bitch! <laughs> I ain't gonna hold up, I really want to play with it, but I'm the type of person, when I really like you, I try to move slow. I want you to know that I'm fast. Right? So, I didn't suck his dick. Didn't have sex with him. But again, he never, we never had a conversation about sex. So I don't know why he assumed we were going to have sex, but whatever. So, we watched the movie, eat Chinese food, we cuddle. We, I mean, you know, I play with his dick, but I don't put it in my mouth or put it in me or anything. And he seems to start getting angry, like real visually upset because I don't want to have sex with him. So he starts like, getting really short with me. And I ain't stupid. Like, I'll leave the fuck. You ain't that damn cute. Yes, he was. But still. Um, so I'm like, okay, cool, I'll leave. He gets a little bit angry and just like, well, you, oh, you can leave then, fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Clearly, you care because you act like a fucking fool. So I'll leave. He gets mad. Right, and, and the, the gag is, y'all, I worked at the front desk of the dorm, so I saw him every damn day. He made his mission to figure out my schedule. Oh, that broke. He made his mission to figure out my schedule at the, at the front desk. So he would start signing niggas in who I know he wanted to fuck. And make, made it feel like I should feel bad because I said no to sex. And I just like, Honestly, at the time I did, I felt like a horrible person because I was like, oh, this boy likes me. He wants to have sex with me and I should have sex with him. I have this, again, I always wanted to be a pleaser because someone helped me. Um, I'm always trying to be a pleaser, so you may have to loosen it. Mm -hmm. um, I like pain, so don't... <laughs> Pull it as tight as you want. You can smack the ass too if you want to. It gets fatter once you get tighter. Um, I always had this. No, wait. You gotta loosen it first. I gotta tighten it. I gotta close it on the first. <laughs> so I used to always be like wanting to be pleasing these men. Wanting to, wanting these men to accept me, to want me in their life. So I, after that situation, I got to the point where I always wanted to say yes. I always felt the need to say yes. I always wanted them to be like, good, ooh, good boy, right? <laughs> Me and my best friend were talking about the good, good boy a lot lately, how we like that little affirmation. And maybe this is my little kink. Okay, you can tighten that. Ooh, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> Don't you like pain, baby? I do, boo. You gotta start from the top <laughs> and work your way down. You know, like sucking dick. Yo, start from the head and work your way down. <laughs> so, right, I got used to always telling men yes. College was interesting. I get to grad school and I started to learn who I am about myself, about this, about all this body. So about this corset. I'm sweating. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Okay. So, one day, can you, you make it tighter? It's like Cinderella. Keep pulling! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there you go. Right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so one day, it's hot, right? It's like 1130 at night. I'm living in Chicago, I'm living in Pilsen. And I'm like, fuck, I'm hot. I want something cold to stop all this brown sugar from melting. So I start walking, right? So I walk in. And for some reason on this specific day, all of the streetlights on my specific block are off. So I start walking down a more main, busier street. I get to this intersection. 
And there was a car full of niggas blasting Young Jeezy. Go on, ship that ass, bitch. I'm going to throw this money. So the Detroit and me want to start throwing this ass. <laughs> there you go. The Detroit and me want to start like twerking because they're playing my song. But I did. And I just kept walking. Peep this. I'm wearing these really tight shorts. Like, look, I'm not too tight. I'm wearing these blue shorts that like stop right here. The blue with gray stripes. My ass look real nice. It's hugging my ass. And this boy, the driver, is yelling out the window. Hey. Hey, yo. Shorty with the fat ass. Come here. Anybody ever ayo at me? So I'm assuming ayo with some other bitches walking by. Keep walking. They saw the intersection, and I, cross, and I cross the street, and they yell, Ayo, shorty in the blue shorts and that fat ass. I said, come here. Why, his whole boy is hanging out the back window doing like this to me. <laughs> um, I was going to ignore them, but I was like, maybe I should like oblige. So I'm like, what's up? What's good? Like, like, like the hood rat that I am. Um, he said some wild shit about coming and getting in the car. Let's have some fun. And this is why I'm happy that I've learned to say no. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm good. Nah, y'all have a good night. I'm good. Nah, bro. You, you think it's fuck? Come here. I'm like, nah, I'm good. So I put my phone out, right? But it's not like I'm on the phone. Maybe my mama, a pretend boyfriend, a roommate, girl, the police, somebody. <laughs> so, um, here, burn rubber. Skirt! Go, niggas gone. Pull like a walk, keep walking. Because I was on my way to Walgreens to get me a two liter of Dr. Pepper, a raspberry, and a mango talente gelato. Because, again, it's hot. Y'all, I can't try not. I'm thinking these motherfuckers have left. They hit a U turn in the middle of Cermak. And they're driving past, they're driving, they're like cruising next to me. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, this motherfucker is really following me. So I'm like trying to keep my composure and try to stay safe. I start to just entertain their questions, started talking to them, so I get into the store. I get into the store and there's this, because I go to the store late at night every night because I'm a fat bitch and I always want some to say gelato with Dr. Pepper. The lady who works there always sees me. She calls me, she calls me Big Baby. Like an old Afro-Latina lady. Because Pilsen is a predominantly Hispanic community. And she goes into saying, um, is that car outside bothering you? I was like, oh yeah. She was like, okay, stay here. Don't leave out. I was like, oh, she was like, yeah. They, they follow all the little, all the little butch queens up and down Cermak at night. I've been over here for a year and a half. They ain't never followed me. I guess the ass is just poking tonight. Anyways, I'm staying, sitting in CVS for about an hour and a half. She lets me have this little teacher for free. We eat it in the store. And we talk about Chicago and love and all the other shit. It was so nice. And she got so sad when I left. She, she's like, when I left, she gave me like an aloe vera. She, she grabbed the aloe vera plant out the window. I was like, congratulations, baby. I graduated from grad school. It was really cute. It was really beautiful. This car, but that look good. Mm -hmm. yeah. What ways? Mm, period. Um, so, I don't see my underwear. So, um, about two months later, I come home to visit. No, I, come, I, just, I just moved back home. It happens again, y'all. I keep drawing out. This, I'm at the gas station around the corner on Fort and Cass. The Sunoco or whatever gas station it is. My mom let me borrow her car, so I have to put gas in that much. I believe my older sister, who never returns to who never returns to car with gas in it. Now we have a tag on this. That's so ghetto. Anyways, I don't want to be like my older sister, who never seems to put gas in my mom's car. I ain't trying to get yelled at or anything. So I'm at a gas station and I'm putting gas in the car. And this guy, I see him staring me down. At this time, I still have long locks. I miss my hair. I'm getting it back soon. Yes, I can actually fit this dress. So, I am. That looks cute. See, I wish I had something to wrap it around and make it tight. Look, look at that body. Anyways, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so now I am. I think I said you're putting gas in the car. And he's staring me. Y'all staring me down from a charger, so you know he got money. Probably a scammer or a drug dealer or something. For us in Detroit, we know what it is. So, he's staring at me. I see him staring at me like this. But he, um, because I'm heavy with the straps. Um, 
He's staring me down. I like wave and smile. He smiles and waves. I get in my car and pull off. He ain't say shit, so fuck it. So I get in the car, I drive off, I go to MoCAD, Museum of Contemporary Art, that's good. Museum of Contemporary Art, Detroit. Um, Cause you know, I wanna be cultured, I wanna look at some art. Next thing I know, wow, look at that body. I actually got on drag race, anyways. Um, so I'm at the museum, I'm walking towards the museum, I just parked. And I hear somebody say, excuse me, excuse me, sir. And I realized it's the guy from across the goddamn street. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kind because he 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 said, excuse me, sir. Like he's being polite, so I'm being polite. Girl, I'm gonna talk to the devil. <laughs> he um, I'm thinking maybe he's lost, maybe he needs directions because he was sitting at the gas station for a while. So I don't know if he's like looking at me trying to figure something out or what. But he wasn't trying to get directions to shit with my phone number. So, you know, I bought this setting powder. I hope it works. <laughs> this bitch is sweating. Um, so, he, he asks for my number. I'm like, okay, sure, no problem. Give him my number. He then starts texting me, asking me questions about, like, oh, where were you going? I'm telling him I'm going to the museum. You know, niggas in Detroit who went culture, they don't know that. They don't know MoCAD is a, is a museum. So... We're texting and texting, and he's talking about how he wants to take me on a date. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I got hit on by somebody with common damn sense. About time, damn. Y'all, yes, this motherfucker started sending me pictures of his dick. So that night, I respond, I'm like, oh, this what, this, this, this what time we y'all? <laughs> I mean, shit, you thick. I was like, I think you want to go on a date. He's like, I do want to go on a date, but I also want to date this dick to that booty hole. Like, he said that word verbatim. Mary corny. <laughs> Just like, why do y'all exist? Anyway, it's not you Ian. I'm happy you exist. Um, so <laughs> he, we're exchanging numbers. We're exchanging text messages. He sent me a picture of his dick. And I was like, wow, this man's dick is big. I don't want no parts of this. Um, I like my insides to very much stay intact. Um, he gets really mad at me because I said I want to have sex. Again, I think it's important that we take autonomy of our bodies completely and wholly. Let these niggas know. No, I'm good. I want you. Again, he was mad. He'd be fine. He stopped texting me. I'm not gonna hold y'all if he would've kept texting me, I probably would've caved in. But I didn't, so I'm okay with that. So, there's that. So, I moved back to Chicago um, after what I thought was gonna be my big break, right? I thought I was gonna move to New York for a job as a studio assistant for some big artist that ended up falling through. I won't say the name, because he may be watching this and I don't want to be shady. But he did a performance here that summer. So if y'all know what summer I'm talking about, you know what performance I'm talking about. So, in the move back to Chicago, right? And I got a job working at the Art Institute of Chicago, which is the, which is the large encyclopedic institution. And I get hungry as hell one day during my lunch break. So, like any hungry little kid, broke, broke, broke person, I go to, I go to um, McDonald's. Sorry, y'all. I go to McDonald's because the down menu was it, y'all. Don't make me don't. I hate putting eye eyeliner on because I can't stop blinking. But put me donuts. And this guy, who's was a security guard there, tries to get my attention. He was like, excuse me, excuse me. I'm like, yeah, can I help you? He was like, you look real familiar. So I'm like playing him, no mind, trying to have them nasty ass way, um, Alicia Keys, you don't know my name type moments. I am not about to mix you, you no know, coffee with half milk and oat milk and all the other shit. <laughs> <laughs> she was fooling! Anyway, <laughs> so he like, um, do I know you from somewhere? Like, no, you don't know me. I ain't from here. Just you know, keeping it short, keeping it cute. He goes into saying, oh, I look familiar. Start asking me if I go out, do anything, right? Tell him, no, nah, I'm not. I don't go out, I'm very homebody because I just moved back to Chicago. I ain't really been hanging out with nobody. So, this is not working. 
So, he asked us if we can exchange numbers because he was like, oh, you, you new here, we should hang out. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, maybe you just trying to be my friend. Bitch, I'm stupid. <laughs> so, this man asked us, we're, we're texting. And the first text messages are very much that, very friendly, not, not nothing super sexual. So I fuck with it, heavy. Um, and after an hour, he goes into asking me questions about my sex, sexuality. Are you, are you gonna be asking, are you gay? I'm gonna get some sky blue, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> my ass is fat. I'm walking around here with fucking yellow headband. Yes, I am gay, sir. So he's like, okay. Uh, shit, you single? <laughs> Very. Um, he then goes to say, well, I ain't gonna hold you up. Your ass is fat. That's why. I, that's why I really. That's why I really like approached you. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then he starts texting me. Now he starts texting me weird, wild shit about how you want to sex with me, how you want to touch on my body. Again, I know. Who don't? You see this ass behind me? It's, it's fat. Who don't want to touch it? So I'm like, okay. Y'all lashes are difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the consensus. That lashes are difficult. I look like somebody's crackhead on you right now. No, I don't want to Um, so we're texting. He asks us for my number. Or, or he asks for my number. He has to have a line texting. So he's texting me and we're texting and then before I get off work that day, would I will I get? Uh, dick pic! Three of them. Masturbation video of him masturbating, busting the fattest of nuts. Let's say his name is James. No. Yeah, let's say his name is James. The reason I'm saying his name is James is because his name is actually fucking James. And I don't give a fuck why he wanted to fight me. So, James is uh, sending me pictures of his penis. And I'm like, okay, penis. We love that. We love to see it. Um, wow, I can't see. It's lifted, bitch. Come down. Anyways, yeah, so he sent me pictures of his penis. And I'm like, okay, penis. And I'm at work, right? So I'm like, between wanting to call him and cuss him out, because I think this is very unprofessional, so we getting dick pictures all at work. I just started this job. I don't want them thinking they're the hire some flaming sissy. So I'm like, I can either text him and cuss him out about like how he's being too forward and disrespectful, or I can go to the bathroom and send him a picture of his ass and whatnot. Instead, I just like, oh, I'll send some nasty shit. Like, oh, that tastes good. Because I'm a freak. I like freaky shit. Oh, I'm gonna drop the lash. He then responds, like, you should come taste it. Some shit like that. I ain't think he's actually responding like that, but what else would, I, what else would somebody do who just sent you an unsolicited dick pic, right? So, this lash is not working. So, I stopped texting them because I'm at work. It's like my first or second day of this job, so I really want to be professional. And, I'm waiting until I get home from work, and he's texting me more pictures. His penis. Talking about how you want to see me, taste me, touch me, feel, feel me. Talking about y'all should, what's your address? I want to come see you tonight. And again, I just moved into this new apartment because again, I just moved back to Chicago. So I'm like, no, nah, I don't think I'm ready to have company over here. I just moved into this apartment with a bunch of other queer people, but they're all white. And I didn't want to come off like a whore uh, when I first got there. So I was like, no, nah, I'm good. But thanks for asking, you know, just being kind, polite. He's very forward. Oh, I just want to see you, man. You playing games. How niggas do? How the fuck am I playing games? I don't want you to go in my house. Anyways, so, they look kind of crazy. Ignore me. Um, so, we are texting. I was like, hey, Van. I was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I got to come in. We can just chill outside and just talk. Okay, cool. Send him my address. We sit outside on the back porch. Talking about music. In life. Magically, his dick just falls in my mouth. You know, don't judge me. 
Um, two weeks later, he comes over. We have sex for the first time. Angel Joe's proud of myself because I moved his ass to dry. Anyways, he, we got to having sex and he was talking some stuff about how, how he needs Viagra for me, how my sex drive is too high, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, yeah, I know, whatever. He then goes on to texting me for a week straight. I intentionally turned on my rare receipts and never fucking responded. That shit was so funny. He used to start cruising down my block, y'all. This is crazy. Anyways. So that happened. Um, so like the end of the year, because this all happened around the same time. I go to this, there's this poet in Chicago named B. Capri. Amazing poet. She has a book called Black, Black Fat, no, um, Black Queer Ho. Because that's her whole aesthetic is being pro-ho, pro-black, pro, pro-ho, pro-fat, pro-queer. And she loves these parties. She has this drink called White Bitch Tears. It's called White Bitch Tears because white bitches, when they start crying, will get your black ass fucked up. Hence the drink being called like White Bitch Tears. So, <laughs> the drink is so damn good. I had three cups, got too drunk. <laughs> I left her house at like four in the morning. It's around the time we had that really bad Arctic tundra, like when the degrees was like 12 degrees outside. So those of you who have ever been to Chicago knows that on New Year's Eve, on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, public transit is free completely. So I'm waiting on the red line. I'm walking up to the red line. Walk, walk past the turnstile, drunk. I still have my locks. I have these big old bamboo earrings, ponytails. Because it was, it was a 90s theme birthday party. So I wore all denim, makeup, ponytails, bamboo. I had like, I put on fake nails and everything. Being real banji. And like, I'm walking up the turn, I'm walking up the stairs. I see this, this man up there just looking down like this. I'm gonna look at him. I turn the other way and go upstairs. He then, I'm like, go upstairs. Let's get under the heat section. It's like negative 12 degrees outside. The next thing I like, I'm listening to Kendrick Lamar on my phone, waiting for the train, waiting for the red line. The guy who was just watching me from upstairs is now standing next to me with his dick out on the red line. <laughs> I'm on my phone, right, listening to, I think I was listening to, um, Loy- was it Loyalty? Loyalty, Loyalty, Loyalty? Yeah, Loyalty, right? Oh, like my phone about to die, so I put it in my pocket, but my phone in my pocket, I look over, his dick is just out, he looking at me like this. And I'm looking like, Boy, if you don't put that little ashy thing up, <laughs> right? Because, like, for one, it's negative 12 degrees. It's like, your dick is out, but it's cold. It's four in the morning. I don't want to see that. <laughs> so, like, if you don't put that cold, you don't put that ashy thing up, I know it's cold. He responds with, I mean, you can warm it up. Who? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? So, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. But I realized the train's not coming for another 20 minutes, and he's right next to me. He's not moving. So I get to the point where I'm just like, okay, let me just entertain him a bit so he won't go crazy. Because it's New Year's Eve, niggas are drunk. He has a bottle of Hennessy in his hand. Oh no. He has a bottle of Hennessy in his hand. So someone like to help me with this wig. Um, <laughs> um, so he, uh, thank you. So he's standing next to okay, He's standing next to me, right? Where's the neck? Where's the neck? <laughs> One second. Okay, well, I'm put my hand in it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So he is standing next to me, right? And have his dick out, talking all this shit about how I should warm it up. And I'm like, no, y'all, it's dead ass. It's cold. And even if I was the type of bitch, I'm not sucking your dick outside. So he puts it up, and now he's talking all this other freaky shit about how. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He's talking about this other freaky stuff about how. I look so pretty. About how I should, how he should, how I should take him home with me and shit. I don't know you. So no one's taking your goofy ass home with me. He then, the red line comes, and I know, because we have a conversation, so he tells me how he's from the South Side. He goes to the University of Chicago, and that his name was Ty Rand. Again, I don't give a fuck about names, dude. I think she'll pull your dicks out on me on the train. Anyways. <laughs> I get on the red line going north because I stayed in Rogers Park and I was in Andersonville and he gets on the train with me. The cart is empty. I said, what does he do? Sit next to me. I'm like, can you move? Uh, what you tell my dick? Pulls his dick out again. 
I mean, I'm good. This time, we went train, bitch. Ponytails out, earrings out. I don't want this lips, this fancy lipstick off my lips. I was like, nah, what you're doing is you're harassing me. You were already harassing me from the jump, but now you're really fucking with me. And I don't do that. So, um, oh, my nails. He, um, cause I want to open this for me. Um, so now I get off at my stop. I'm thinking he just gonna stay on. What does he do? Gets off the train. Okay. Thanks, buddy. He gets off the train. He starts to follow me home, y'all. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, what the hell are wrong with this man? So, you know, like always, whenever I'm walking home, I always do different routes, because you never know who's following you. I don't broke the lipstick, god damn it. You never know who's following you. So, I started walking, he's following, talking more shit about he wanna fuck. Let me suck, suck his dick. All that other stuff. And y'all, when I tell y'all, I got to the point where I, the, the Kettering, Charles F. Kettering High School came out of me. <laughs> and I pulled my shirt up, fucked up with his ass. <laughs> this looks crazy, right? Me doing all like this. <laughs> and, oh damn, my bad, my bad. I didn't want to, I was trying to get my dick, so I ain't trying to hurt you. You're following me home at four in the morning on New Year's Day, sir. You're fucking with me. Um, so, you know, that happened. So, for the past few months, recently, right, I've been like really thinking about my life. I just turned 30 last month, May 26 to be exact. So, I'm thinking about my 20s and the things that I've, I've dealt with, things that I had to process through. And what I can say, right, is I'm perfectly fine with telling motherfuckers no now. I had a problem telling people no. Again, I was always one to want to please. The corset's coming apart. Oh, it broke. Time for a new corset. I always wanted to please, but now I know better. Now I have no problem telling these men no. Um, loving myself, right? Um, Accepting who I am, you know, with all the skin, all the shape of the skin, baby. Uh, that's a good ass shape of it. It's expensive ass shape of it. Because the shape of the spot I wanted to go to wasn't open today. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, hi. This is Dion. Dion is a fat, black, femme, queer, non binary person. Who is the baddest of bitches? Dion is a fat black femme, queer non binary person who can take your nigga with ease. Case in point, this body, this half done mug. <laughs> this is Dion, a banshee bitch from the east side of Detroit who ain't got no problem with smacking the bitch if I need to. <laughs> this is Dion, a product of DPS. A product of a family full of strong women. This is Dion, a product of all of y'all, of the amazing black femmes and queer people who I share community with, who love on me and let me love on them. Thank you. <laughs>